The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. Welcome back to the Secrets of Technology podcast. I'm Kim Commando, America's digital goddess, and I never miss an episode. You're listening to the Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. And joining me today on the panel are Pat Scott. Hey, Pat. Hi. And Father Andrew Kinstetter. Hey, Father Andrew. Hello there. Uh, Folks, before we get into the show, I want to tell you about another show on the StarQuest Network you are sure to enjoy called The Secrets of Stargate. You can find that wherever fine podcasts are found or at sqpn.com slash Stargate. And you want to subscribe right away because if you're a Stargate fan, they've got a treat for you. Their 100th episode is coming up and they have an interview with someone who was one of the creators of Stargate. So it's Ooh. it's really cool. Very it's a cool. Really, really cool interview. Uh, so check that out, sqpn.com slash Stargate. So let's talk about our top topic today, which is we're going to be talking about basic PC and mobile security. Now, there's all kinds of advanced security that you could be doing, but you want to focus on some of the basics before you get to that. And and if you're an expert, you might say, oh, I know all this stuff. You might pick up a tip here or there while we talk about it. But there are all kinds of threats that we're facing now on our PCs, on our phones and tablets, <laughs> on your doorknobs. I mean, we get all kinds of stuff these days. Uh, uh, but we're going to focus mostly on uh, PC and mobile, you know, computer and mobile uh, 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 security. And uh, th- there are all kinds of threats that we could face. You know, there's the traditional ones, viruses, malware, phishing. Am I missing anything? Is there anything else we should bring up? that uh, are possible threats uh, scams of any sort right you know, yeah. that really fits in there ransomware is is kind of the other bigger yeah. thing hitting companies more so than than the personal user though right right but yeah ransomware is another one that's out there and in fact there's um some um, a malware headline I want to, we're going to be talking about later that you know will be an example of this but i guess we should define things a little bit like uh, uh, the difference between viruses and malware and phishing and ransomware phishing is just an effort where someone is trying to m- manipulate you into basically getting yourself in trouble they're trying to get you to reveal information or give them information that by clicking on a link or giving them a password or something like that that will let them get access to information or data that they want that will be beneficial to them. Um, A virus is a program that's sort of self-replicating that causes havoc with a computer, causes damage, you know, causes it to not work properly. Whereas malware is, and, and a virus is usually small and hidden, whereas malware is a problem piece of software that disguises itself as something else usually does that sound about right you know the am i am i on target there that's pretty close yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i mean malware doesn't replicate to other people yeah like a virus would and uh but malware could be advertising related as opposed to you know something that is actually trying to harm your computer it's trying to get you to go other places and they do it in the form of advertising for you to to get these products that aren't necessarily very good. Okay, good. Right. That's, that's another way of putting it. Yeah. And then ransomware is malicious software that will lock you out of your computer or out of your data or one way or another, hold you hostage until you pay a ransom to unlock it, to get rid of it and that sort of thing. So um, for the longest time, the the one of the tr- truisms or adages about this sort of thing was oh if you're a Mac user you don't have to worry because you know Macs are such a small part of the of the market and it's not really lucrative and all the viruses and stuff are on the Windows side that's not true I mean 
it's still not as bad, but there is there is definitely, and there always has been, but there is definitely viruses and other malicious things that affect Mac users, also affect iOS users. Um, it is not completely free of you know you not you, mm-hmm. you can't you don't you can't bury your head in the sand with this stuff. That's that's really what it is. Well, and the other thing is, is that a lot of it is is being uh, gotten into the browsers, you know, malware into the browser, which runs on all platforms. That's right. Even Linux, you know. Uh, so it's it's like now it's it's kind of a, a of a secondary skin over the top of of what used to be that all you worried about. That's right. Well, and and it, it also, I mean, back in the day, right? Everybody was on Windows, so the Mac, the Macs just weren't targeted as much because the people weren't weren't using the Macs. But nowadays, with iOS and with, I mean, with Macs uh, being what they are, um, there's tons of people using those those systems now. So right. they're they're targeting Macs now just as much as they're going to target any other platform. Right. Right. Exactly. Now, one of the the key things you you need to could be concerned with is actually something that's it's not a, it's not so much the getting infected, it's complacency, um, mm-hmm. and that's what kind of what we're talking about. But there's also a, a kind of complacency that can occur when alert fatigue, right? Where you get alerts, you know, pop ups like you have virus software, you have malware software to protect you, you have your built-in operating system protections. And sometimes they'll pop up these warnings and they pop up so often that you just get in the habit of saying, okay, 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 go away, go away, go away. I'm trying to get work done, you know, and you ignore those warnings. And so part of the problem with with some software, some uh, security software is that it warns you too often and it makes you ignore it. You, 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 stop, you stop paying attention to the warnings because you have so many false alarms that you don't listen. It's just kind of like with the smoke detector problem, you know? If your smoke detectors go off at the drop of a hat all the time, when there's a real problem, you may not pay attention. Or, or the other one is the car alarm problem, right? Does anyone pay attention to car alarms anywhere except to go, <laughs> would that guy shut it off? You know, I mean, the car alarms are useless these days. Well, and the, uh, the other thing is, is the abundance of reports of hacked sites. You get so many of them all the time that people just don't even think about it. And, you know, they just assume, well, it's not me. You know, and and I've had so many people say, you know, that the antivirus companies, et cetera, will tell you about all of the breached passwords, but they've already changed theirs or they they just can't they can't handle the number of them. Right. Right. And and one of the other ones is um, people will assume that basic uh, computer problems are they got hacked, Uh, you know, things that are that are actually just, you know, bugs or. Um, a lack of understanding, right? Yeah, something like that. And they're like, "Oh, I got hacked." They, you know, this thing. Well, don't claim everything is hacked. Like it's a little bit of the boy who cried wolf sort of situation. If you, if it's mm-hmm. not a real hack, a you can fix it and be be okay. <laughs> but b, y- you need to know how to avoid that. If you, if it's just, if you just got hacked, it's not your fault. Somebody did something to you. But it might be that you did something that messed things up. And if you just think it's a hack you're not going to fix it. Right. So it's important to keep an understanding of what's going on and to not brush things into like this big bucket and say, it's all hacking, you know, that sort of thing. There's also the, the potential problem on the other side of like someone who is just naive and trusts everything. Yeah. And so if you're on the, on the internet and there's a little pop-up that says, you know, your computer was compromised, click here to, to fix it. You're right. going to have the, 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 the nice, wonderful older lady click on that because she, she trusts it. And then, and that's what causes the problem. Right. That's a big one is the, is the fake, the, the pop-up, the, like the website pop-up that says, you know, you, uh, click here to fix whatever, like windows mm-hmm. wants to fix a thing and it makes it look like a windows dialog box. Right. Or you get an email saying your account was compromised and one of the quickest ways that I tell people to, to recognize that it's a scam is you just look at the email address from where it's from. And it's often from a string of numbers and letters. And, you know, it's or not a even a personal f- email address. Yeah. Right, right. AOL. It's not even from, <laughs> you know, yeah. Facebook.com or, or Amazon or whatever. But you, you, we, we have an inherent trust sometimes that we need to just 
pause for a second and, and work through it. Right. Yeah. In general, the advice with that is, is when you get a warning, don't, don't do what it wants you to do. Go at it a different direction. Mm-hmm. You know, don't go to their website, do something else to cross check. Right. Don't, right. don't assume what it's right. Yeah. So if you get a pop up that says, you know, your system is, is damaged, click here to fix it. Don't click on it. Go separately to the system's own repair utilities or system utilities or whatever, what have you, and go at that yourself separately. Don't follow that dialogue. And many times you'll have to actually physically turn off the machine because those type of pop-ups will lock a Windows computer for sure. And you can't type anything and you can't go to any other website. So you actually have to physically power it off for 20 to 30 seconds and then you can reboot and you'll be all right. Wow. You know, so frankly, actually, if you run into something like that, you, it, it's even more of an indication that it's something uh, malicious because, you know, a legitimate dialogue box is not going to, you know, a legitimate uh, warning from the system is not going to lock you out of everything like that. So, right. yeah, that's a, that's a good point too. So we want to go over uh, a few pieces of software, utilities that can help you with this sort of thing. And for, for Mac OS, I found this great website, this great programmer. Uh, his name is uh, Patrick Wardle. And he has this site full of free Mac utilities, security utilities, and there's all kinds of stuff. Now, Patrick works for a bigger company. I'm trying to remember what Company works. He works for like a very large company as a security programmer, uh, but he's developed this reputation as an independent security consultant and you know security programmer. And he's got all these tools, and not all of not all these tools are going to be suitable for everyone. So his website is at objective c s e e dot org, and it's a nonprofit five hundred one c three foundation. And he's got all of these tools. All of them are free. And all of them are open source and open source, as you know, is important because it means other people can look at the code and see that it does what it says it does and it isn't isn't malicious. So he's got all of these different pieces of software, but I want to highlight a few of them. The first one I want to mention is one called Lulu. And all of these are almost all these run in the background. They're they're background apps. Uh, You just set them up, start them running, and then they protect you in behind. So Lulu is a um, it, it monitors your your Macs outgoing communications for any app. So any application that wants to talk to the outside world off of your computer, it will alert you and say, Hey, this, this application wants to do this. Is this okay? And you know, most of the time it is, it's fine. It'll tell you which one and give you some information. And then you just tell it, okay. Uh, So that's Lulu. Then there's another one called knock knock. And this one is, um, it lets lets you know when anything installs a piece of software deep in your system. Uh, So persistently installed software, it says. So, and this will let you say, hey, this, you know, this software that you just downloaded wants to install this deep in your system. And you can tell it, yes, that's fine. And and most of the time it'll be fine. Um, You you just got to pay attention to it. So that's knock, knock. Then there's another one called, REI key. And this one looks for keyboard loggers. So one of the ways that that hackers try to hack you is they want your passwords. And so they will install a piece of software that will record everything you type. And within that will be your passwords, of course. And so this detects uh, keyboard loggers. Um, There's another one called block block that um, you can get to it here. Um, it monitors persistence locations. So again, another one of those things where it's looking for software that's installed in places where um, legitimate software installs things, but also hackers install things uh, so that they can, it's places for viruses and malware to hide. Uh, another one is called ransomware, which detects ransomware software. Um, and where's another one? Oversight was the last one I want to talk about. And it's another one. Um, this one detects malware that wants to use your audio, your camera or microphone surreptitiously. It lets you know when any pro- software wants to use your microphone 
or your camera. So um, there's lots more software on the site. Uh, a lot of it is a little more uh, esoteric or, you know, for, for people with a little more um, needs, advanced needs and that sort of stuff. But these are the ones that I recommend. I run myself on my computer and uh, I haven't yet been hit with a virus, not on wood uh, or malware or ransomware, but it, it, it makes me feel better knowing that it's there and I don't have to worry about, you know, uh, and when these alerts come up, I look at them every time and I make sure what software is doing this. Is this doing, is this something that seems legitimate? Okay. I'll do that. Um, you can't just tell it in every, every time it alerts you to block it because then your legitimate software won't run. So, um, so, uh, so that's, yeah. So that's the, the various pieces of software from Patrick Wardle at objective dash C. One comment on that is that people will often ask me, how do I know if a keylogger is on my system? And of course, you've got software there. However, almost all, well, all of the Windows software that I know, antivirus software, has a keylogger detector built into it. So you don't have to have a separate program to go look for it. Although you could get one and look and cross-check, but I mean, they all do include a keylog yeah, checker. Yeah, I should point that out. Yeah, if you're, if you're running commercial antivirus software, they will have, you know, usually a lot of these tools built in. And I, the, nice, the nice thing here is this is um, all free, but yeah, that's, that's, and um, some, a lot of vir anti commercial antivirus software is kind of resource heavy. These are all very small and uh, don't put much of a load at all on your computer. So that could also be a factor if you find like the big commercial brand name antivirus packages are slowing your system down. Something like this might be a little uh, easier on your system. Right. So one of the other threats that you can sometimes face is uh, DNS hijacking. And what that is is. So the DNS system is the domain name system. So if you go to Amazon, you type in Amazon.com in your browser, the DNS system translates that to a, a, a series of numbers that corresponds to the actual server that is serving the website. And what can happen is, is that that can um, be hijacked and redirect you to a different site that isn't the the actual one and it's you know it's a phishing site or it's a, they're trying to steal information from you um as well as um there are other dns related issues and ads and trackers and that sort of stuff so the, the next one i want to talk about is something that's available for all systems mac windows android ios even uh called next dns and what it does is you it changes your dns server that you're accessing. So you, 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 you're going to um, have it use it, their servers to translate the DNS. And it ensures that it's only using the, the correct DNSs. You're not going to get hijacked, but also does a few other things for you too. Um, it can block ads for you. It, you can have it whitelist certain websites or blacklist certain uh, uh, websites. Like never let me never go to one of these sites and you can, you know, think of the various ones that, that you wouldn't want to use uh, adult sites or something like that, you know, that you want to put in there and block. Um, there are parental controls, there's ad blocking and, and just analytics, you know, what kind of data am I, am I getting? Um, and it also prevents certain kinds of trackers. One of the things that uh, these ad networks like to do is to track you from site to site and think, Oh, you know, you, you went to this site, then you went to that site, then you went to that site. Well, this, prevents the some of that tracking as well so um what it the way it works is is you can install a little piece of software on your pc or you can install a profile on your ios device that tells it to only use this cisco all the dns requests go through this system um and at the androids also you can install an app i think that that does that too i don't know how the android exactly works uh but it it's works pretty well. I haven't had any problems. There's occasionally where I want to whitelist the site. Like, look, just let this site through. Don't block anything on it. I want to see the whole thing. And I have to kind of sometimes, um, especially sites where it, it thinks it's showing ads when it's really just the images that go with the site. Some, sometimes I have to struggle with a little, a little bit in the past. It's getting better, but, um, 
they're they're still refining how it works. But um, so that's next DNS. There's a free level, and then there's a paid level at a you know, where you get uh, even more um, services. But the the free level is pretty generous. Um, Three hundred thousand queries per month, which is a lot. Um, if you have a big family like I do, then you could you could step it up a level and for two dollars a month or twenty bucks a year, which is in, then you get unlimited queries. So I mean that's a pretty reasonable price. So um, did either of you use just regular DNS or use anything special? I usually use Google DNS or occasionally I'll play with one of the other ones, but. Uh, a lot of times um, the Google DNS is so much faster than the uh, the cable companies or the AT&T or whatever to return sites. And that's why I use it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And I've never, I've never actually played around with, with uh, changing the DNS server. So yeah, there, there are several of them out there. 1.1.1.1 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1, and, and then Google's is 8.8.8.8. 8. 8. 8. And there's some other ones that are uh, open DNS and, all of them have different flavors of things, but I never found any one that I said, oh, this is the one I want to use, except Google. Yeah, OpenDNS has one. Cloudflare has another one. Um, but they're all designed to kind of prevent tracking and the very DNS hijacking in one way or another. Yeah, I hadn't heard the heard this one about uh, stopping ads. Yeah. You know, uh, I hadn't heard that. That was a, a feature of the other ones that I played with. Yeah, this is this has been yeah, like I said, this has been pretty good. It it does some uh, some pretty good security. The next thing we want to talk about is malware, and one of the the software that I use is w runs on everything. It's called Malware Bytes, and uh, this I got with my Eero subscription. So with Eero Plus, the Eero is the home mesh, uh, mesh Wi-Fi networking system, and with a they have a bundle software bundle where you get uh, malware bytes one password and uh encrypt vpn and encrypt.me vpn and uh all for you know one price and so i got the malware bytes and i've installed it and it's been unobtrusive I've, obviously i haven't you know uh, I, I guess not so obviously but i haven't had any malware show up so I, i'm not too worried about that but um it's been a good piece of software, you know, a good citizen. It hasn't, in the past, I've had other malware software or virus software that really sucks up all the system resources. And this, this has been pretty good. So I've used this, I've used malware bytes for years and uh, on my, I've got it installed on every device that I have, either Mac or PC, unless I'm playing with one for a customer, then I'll try theirs for a while. But, but yeah. And the other thing about it is on Windows for uh, the the paid malware bytes uh, is uh, only thirty nine a year. And if you have multiple machines, then you just add on each additional machine for ten bucks. So uh, it, it's very reasonable. And but I do have a few people who are very frugal and very limited in their income. So Malwarebytes actually makes a program for Windows that is a standalone that you just run it to cross check and make sure is there anything did anything get on my machine. And it's excellent re removing it as well because uh, it's the same company's product. It's just it doesn't install. And so for free, you can run this. And I tell my people to run it once a week in the beginning and maybe every couple of weeks. And then if it never finds anything, that's good, all good and nice. If it continues to find things, then their habits are such that they need to p get the paid version to protect them self proactively. Mm. And that it's been a really good product. That sounds good. That's great. I'm, I'm glad that there's they make those different levels for people because. You know, we all make these judgments of security versus expense versus, you know, inconvenience and that sort of stuff. And uh, people need to be able to make that judgment based on their resources and, you know, time and money and that sort of thing. So I'm glad they do that. Well, the, the only thing that I uh, would wish more is that their free version for the Mac, uh, that uh, it would be proactive. Uh, I, well, how can I put it? They they tend to push and advertise their paid version more heavily when you're using the free one, which is why I like the standalone that it doesn't install. Uh, 
Uh, but the uh, the paid version is very unobtrusive and it's very low resources and it's not that expensive. So I just wish they didn't push their advertising so much on the free version. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple more uh, pieces of Mac software. These are Mac freeware that it's out there that really helpful uh, from a company called Eclectic Light Company. And there's two pieces of software called Silent Night and Lock Rattler. Now, these are not monitors. You run these every once in a while. And basically what they do is they tell you the state of your firmware and your security updates and that sort of stuff and whether you need to install these security updates that uh, it, will, it will just tell you if you're out of date or, you know, if your various system protections aren't there and that sort of stuff. Um, it's more informational than anything if there is a button to install updates. Um, but in general, if you're keeping up to date with your operating system updates, you, you're, you're usually pretty good. And that's what these do. Silent Night and Lock Rattler, they're basically monitoring the system software. Um, so that's that. And then um, one piece of software that, that's really nice, it's available via SetApp. <laughs> as I'm always talking about promoting setup. Uh it's it's not a it's not an episode of Secrets of Tech anymore if I don't mention setup. Is uh Clean My Mac X from uh MacPaw. They're the makers of setup. And this is one of those comprehensive system utilities. So it does a whole bunch of things. It uh deletes, you know, caches and runs system updates and uh it has a malware detector you know in it that you can run um and it it will also you know uh find old big files that are taking up space in your drive and that sort of thing so um that is also another tool that i run pre- pretty often just to make sure things are running smoothly i i rely on malware bytes mostly for the uh, malware protection and i use clean my mac just to keep the system fresh and clean and caches cleared out and that sort of stuff um, so that that's pretty good. For a long time, it was kind of controversial because uh, there were other products called Mac Keeper and a couple of others that yeah. uh, were much more intrusive, much more advertising, much more slimy. And so when this came along, a lot of people just assumed it was one of the uh, one more of the same, you know, not to be trusted pieces of software. But I, I did some research after you had uh, listed it here and I was reassured by what I found. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been using it for years now, and it's been pretty good. And it, it's I lo- I really like um, it has a uh, app uninstaller built in, so that it will gather up all the little files that every app installs all over the place when you want to uh, uninstall. And yeah, it it works really well for that sort of thing. And I, I run it maybe once a month, and it run it through the system, and you know make sure things are clear and clean and that sort of stuff. And uh, it works pretty well that way. I've turned off some of the monitoring bits because they felt a little intrusive. They would too many alerts, too many warnings like, hey, you know, your your memory is getting full. No, it's not. You just don't understand how me- memory paging works, apparently, or, you know, under Ventura or whatever. So I've turned some of that stuff off, but uh, it's it's general cleaning stuff works really well. On the PC side, I just wanted to uh, mention that the built-in Microsoft Windows security is actually very good, especially at catching malware, I mean, uh, ransomware and things like that. Uh, and I so I recommend for most of my customers, just be, use the built, basic Windows security with a cross-check with malware bytes, either the adware cleaner or the paid malware bytes, because they work well, real well with Windows security. Uh, on the Mac side, I wanted to mention that there is a free program from Sophos that is really low resources that I have used over the years for some of my clients. And uh, it's free. It's You have to register it, but there's no cost. And it's it's a pretty good always-on antivirus. Okay. I will uh, I'll make sure to put a link to the, those in the show notes as well. And then uh, for some some people, too, uh, if they want a paid version of something, then Bitdefender is another one that has been well reviewed both on the the uh, Mac and the PC side. And and uh, so sometimes I'll I'll say, well, OK, if you want to pay for something, here's another good one. Good. Awesome. And then let's we'll wrap things up with the, you know, just some best practices, you know, your, your uh, passwords and passcodes, p- passwords and, you know, Use good ones. <laughs> don't reuse the, the, you know, we say this a lot. Don't reuse them everywhere. 
we t- talked last time on last episode about the uh, the Wall Street Journal's report on people getting their iPhones stolen and uh, having their uh, being locked out of their Apple ID accounts and their Apple Pay and all that sort of stuff because they had they were using passcodes in public where people could shoulder surf and look at the code and get it from them. Use long passcodes. Don't don't use the the num the six digit passcode or the you know the four digit passcode. Use an alpha alphanumeric passcode with letters and numbers with an in you know more than six. I I sometimes recommend think of a sentence that you will always remember, and that's type that in. You know a line from a movie, a favorite line from a book or something obscure. Not Luke, I'm your father. But something, something <laughs> obscure that you know. If you're a big Star Wars fan, you know, father, don't use that. Luke, I'm your father, because someone will think you're, you will realize you're a Star Wars fan, and they'll try that. So use, you know, something obscure. Uh, so keep good passwords, good passcodes. Don't reuse your passwords. Use a password manager that lets you use a unique password everywhere, and then keep physical security for your devices. You know, when you walk away, for, if you, don't leave your stuff laying around unlocked. That's a big one. Uh, don't pick up strange thumb drives and plug them into your computer. I mean, these are basic ways that people get into your system. Um, when you're in public, we mentioned this again, I mentioned this last week, when you're typing in your passcode, hold your phone close to your chest and cover it like you would on an ATM, you know, in entering your pin, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and then keep your router, your operating systems up to date latest security patches that's really important father you had some advice too uh you wanted to give yeah two two semi quick stories that kind of illustrate this because i think um sometimes i can fall into the the just the notion of oh well i've i've i'm never gonna get scammed i've never you know i'm i'm too smart for this i know what i'm doing etc 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 and so last fall um I was purchasing tickets to go see Mannheim Steamroller with my family over Christmas break. And tickets were supposed to go on sale at a certain day at a certain time. And so I logged on to the to the website at that particular time. And they um, the the website, I didn't realize this, but the, the website popped up and it showed that they were all sold out. That was just the website. They hadn't refreshed it yet, but I didn't realize that. And so it it made me panic because I thought, Oh shoot, this is such a fun thing. I want to do this with my family. And I made the mistake then of, of going to Google and, and trying to get back to the website. I typed in the the name of the, the convention center that we were going to go to. And rather than look at what website I was going to, I went to the first one that popped up that said, we have tickets for Mannheim steamroller at this convention center. And I clicked on it and they were selling tickets and I bought four tickets for, for my mom, my dad, and one of my brothers and myself. And uh, needless to say, it was not the right website. Now they they did sell me tickets to the to the concert. It wasn't a complete scam, but they charged me well over double. Wow. So and I and I I wasn't thinking. Um, so and I <laughs> I I was f- legitimately furious when I figured out what was going on because I went back to the original website when they had time to re refresh it. And I could have gotten better seats for more than more than half uh, of the of the cost that I had paid. Wow. And yeah. so it was it was I called the, the company and they were they basically and it was like it was a third party company that p- would buy tickets and resell them. Mm-hmm. Right. So it was it was Scalpers. a legitimate. Right. It was it was a legitimate thing. They were going to get me the tickets, but it was they 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 were just they were making tons of money. And so they would not refund me. They would not uh, cancel the order because I was the one who clicked. Yes, I agree to to purchasing these tickets from you guys. And um, long story short, uh, they thankfully they were they were supposed to mail these tickets out to me. And I and I gave them my address and everything. And the tickets never showed up. So I was able to call them back and say, hey you guys screwed up our, you know, the, the, the address that you've plugged into my, to our, to, for our home address is correct. Tickets haven't showed up. And it was only then that they finally offered to, to refund me and cancel the order, oh, wow. which I promptly did. 
<laughs> and then I went back to the original website and bought, we bought better tickets for, for half the price. Wow. So thankfully for, for me, it all, it all worked out. But I, I, I say this as a, as a warning. Um, I, I acted with emotion and with panic. And it prevented me from recognizing what was going on. And I am not one to get hoodwinked by these things. So mm -hmm. if they're going to catch me on this, they're going to catch all sorts of people on this. So just, you know, general rule of thumb, if, if you're kind of in a panicky mode, just take a, take a breather, you know, have somebody else even come look at it with you to make sure you're, you're doing it all correctly. Um, or just give it five minutes. I mean, none of these things are, are really, unless it's a eBay five minute countdown sort of thing that <laughs> right. you're, that you're time crunched on. But, uh, so don't act with panic. And the other, the other just general advice would be, uh, don't respond when you're half asleep too. So I, my, my, my dad would not mind me sharing this story. He called me last week when I was on spring break and he was all in a panic because he got a text message from Netflix, which they don't even have a Netflix account, but he, he got it when he was in, when he was asleep at night and clicked on the link because he thought it was legit in his half sleep state and then promptly entered his Apple ID username and password thinking, oh. thinking that was what they wanted because that was the only thing he could think of. And then the wheels turned and he immediately changed his password and, and called me in the morning and, and that was, that was what I suggested for him to do anyway. And of course, watch his account for any suspicious activity. But it was one of those things, again, he even recognized if he was fully awake, he wouldn't have clicked on it because Netflix was misspelled even in the text message. <laughs> oh, and, right. and he only, he only acted because it was, he was half asleep. So in all of these things, I think just a general rule of thumb is, you know, be patient, take a breather, don't act with emotion, just, um, you know, be, be sensible. <laughs> If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Yep. Don't don't re or uh, don't react to things. Take 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 a few moments and then act. Right. Yeah, I have a, a a friend who's a lawyer that he said fatigue got him one day when uh, he had some investments and he was checking on some stuff and somebody uh, said that uh, that they were a representative of of that particular company and they knew his account information. Uh, and called him and said they were trying to trap an employee that was doing some fraud and they needed him to cooperate with them to to do this. And of course, they transferred some money from his account into a Bitcoin account, oh. gave him the password, only they didn't tell him that they could change it any time. And so he transferred the money over and then... He couldn't get it back out, and he lost forty thousand dollars. Wow! And he's wow. a lawyer, and he came to me before the, the 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 money disappeared out of the Bitcoin account. There was not a thing we could do because yeah. he didn't have the real password. He just had a pen that let him look at it, Ugh. and he could see the money going out. Oh. It was it was, mm. and he just said, "I was tired." Yep, yep. I was tired, and they got me when I was vulnerable. That was like the the call I got where the guy was claimed to be from the you know Goldman Sachs with the credit card and you know was had all the information he had social security number address phone number and I just would not like I didn't panic I stayed calm I told him I know you're a scammer he tried to convince me he did his best I'm like nope you're a scammer I'm hanging up now I'm calling I'm calling Goldman Sachs and telling them about this fraud. And I didn't let him panic, panic me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's an interesting sort of parallel to this spiritual life here that I, that I just want to point out. It's, it's a, it's a rough analogy, so forgive me. But, uh, I always remember learning when I was, uh, like in seminary and spiritual direction and, and those sorts of things, just when you're, when you're, <laughs> they, they use the acronym HALT. So when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Yep you should be just be more careful when you act because if you're hungry, angry, angry, lonely, or tired, you are more likely to do something that you will regret. Now they were, we were discussing it with morality and, you know, doing something stupid um, rather than clicking the wrong link. But I think the same general principle applies Yeah, that when you're, when you're kind of off kilter, 
you're more likely to do something, make a mistake and click the wrong link. And they're relying on you on getting you in your week. I, I've been getting these text messages for the past couple weeks, always from a, a beautiful, apparently Asian women. I don't know why they're all Asian. They all are, but beautiful. And they're, they're all like, Oh, Hey, you know, uh, let's get together for lunch again next week, blah, blah, blah. And they're all like pretending it's a, it's a wrong number that they're texting me. And oh, then, yeah. and then it's like, this isn't Anna. It's always Anna. I don't know why it's always Anna <laughs> or Anne. Um, and, it, and I'm always like wrong number. Wrong, I know I don't engage wrong number. Mm -hmm. I mean, I should probably just block it and just ignore it. But you know, on the rare occasion it might be somebody and I'm curious too. And that's probably a bad thing, but um, I, I just kind of curious where they're going to go with it. And it's, and it's always like, they're always trying to, I know it's a catfishing thing. They're trying to yep. get a lonely guy and hook him and go from there. Uh, the last one was, um, this is a funny, a little funny story. Uh, she's coming home from vacation and she's going to come and pick up her dog. And there's a picture of her holding a dog, you know, her, I, it's probably random photo from the internet. And when can I, when can I get, come and get the dog? And so I responded, never, you can never have the dog back. <laughs> <laughs> what? Have you gone crazy? Yes. Oh. Yes, I have. When are you at the kennel? <laughs> never. I have closed the kennel and set all the dogs free. I'm now living in the woods as a hermit at one with nature. <laughs> <laughs> and then I responded, then I said, now go oh. find something better to do than trying to scam people. One of my sons got one of these texts on the phone, you know, like, uh, hey, well, let's get a date for tennis or whatever it was. Yeah. And so he just started giving him, thank you for signing up for snail facts. And then he would give them something out of the Wikipedia oh about snails. And they would come back with, well, what you misunderstood me. Yeah, <laughs> you must have lost my address. And he gave him another Thank you for subscribing to Snail Facts. And he'd give them another. <laughs> and after about 10 times, they finally stopped engaging. <laughs> That's great. I have to remember that. I think I saw something like that. I think I saw his. And it was like, the reply, stop, if you would like me to stop. And they're like, stop. Thank you for subscribing to Snail Facts. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a, you know, yeah. like he said, he wanted him to believe it was an automated response. Yeah, yeah that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I th and the, the other thing that I wanted to mention, at least in our, in our church world, is uh, priests and bishops are never going to ask <laughs> parishioners for gift cards, yeah. for iTunes, for yes. any, any of those sorts of things. So if you ever get an email claiming that, that we want to, you know, help out the homeless by giving them iTunes gift cards and we need you you personally, Anna, to, to, to give us, to go, go to, go to target and buy these gift cards. No, don't do it. Just delete. Well, and the same thing with those emails that you got something tell, saying it was your Bishop that needed you to transfer some funds from one account to another account. Yeah. And no, <laughs> as father Joseph's son said, uh, I think it was last week. He said, uh, Priests will never ask for gift cards. We will just tell you to put cold, hard cash in the collection basket on Sunday. <laughs> this or, is or, true. Or, or casino chips if you live in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the, Vegas or Reno or something, throw the casino chips in. But in the basket on Sunday. All right. Uh, so I think that does it for now. We'll obviously we could be revisiting uh, issues of security questions. If you have any particular security-related questions, we would love to answer them in a future episode, and you can send those to us to technology at sqpn.com. Uh, last week I said mysterious at sqpn.com. I'm so used to saying that one. Uh, and someone, someone wrote in and uh, told me I said the wrong thing. So it's technology <laughs> at sqpn.com. And thank you to the listener who let me know I did that. Uh, before we move on, I want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create the secrets of technology, including Jennifer P., Justin R., Elizabeth T., Carrie B and Jason E. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the secrets of technology and all the shows at StarQuest. And you can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. And I should mention, as we approach April 15th or April 18th this year, tax day in the United States, uh, SQPN StarQuest is a 501c3. So all your gifts are tax deductible to the fullest extent allowable by the law. Consult your tax professional. <laughs> I have to put the disclaimer in. So uh, let's move on to our headlines. Uh, now, this is an example of paying attention to the headline and then reading the article to see what actually is going on. Because the headline says one thing, but the article says something else. So the headline is 
AI has successfully imitated human evolution and might do it even better. And and you're thinking, has it created a new superhuman? <laughs> no. Uh, what has happened is, is an AI has designed sequences of 20 amino acids that make it proteins. And when compared to natural evolution of these proteins, some of the sequences worked just as well as ones generated over millions of years of evolution. So not better, maybe just as well. And they're just amino acids, which are just sequences. They're not human. <laughs> right. So, I mean, humans have amino acids in us. Right. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it's an itch. I chose this because for two reasons. One, it's a sort of educational thing. Like, don't just go by the headlines, right? You, you got to read these things to, to get it a little further. But also just it's interesting because this article talks about how they used one of these um, language models, AIs to do this because the protein uh, bits, I forget what they call the, 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 um, the sequences of biological proteins, they are like words and the acids form sentences in a sense, in, in, in a sense. And so um, I just thought that was kind of interesting too. Well, I mean, so what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with the headline not matching the article. That is a bait and you know switch bait and switch <laughs> tactic that we've been seeing a long time. But yeah, it's kind of sad that that they depend upon it. I thought it was an interesting article, though. Yeah, yeah, I find it just fascinating. I mean, in in general, because it, AI is basically we the the biological creatures have to think about how these things work, and then we have to code it into something to to replicate it. So some, you know, okay, they're, they're never gonna, there's always a, a smarter person that's programming these, these AIs. So right. I, 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 I don't think we're ever going to get to Skynet, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but I've always just found these interesting, how we, how we think about problem solving and how we, how they came up with using a language algorithm to do this. Because when I was in computer science, I took an AI class and we, we had to create a program that would evolve quote unquote, a uh, solution to a Sudoku puzzle. And it was, and it was interesting because it was, we're going to take a puzzle that you would solve in one way if you were just sitting down doing it on a newspaper. And we had to just, we had to flip it and we had to, we had to figure out how would you tell a computer to solve it using this particular method. Mm. And so like, I, I just find that all, that whole thing very, very interesting. Um, of course there's a, there's at, and at the core of life, there's a mystery that even artificial intelligence isn't going to quite get. So we're only right. uh, replicating what we see and what we can scientifically grasp. But, but yeah, I thought it was, is really a fascinating article and shows how far AI has come and will continue to go. Oh yeah. It's, it's like by the week, these things are advancing. Leaps and yeah. bounds. It's interesting. So um, the next headline is one that has a connection to what we've been talking about with security. Uh, and this, uh, <laughs> this headline says, until further notice, think twice before using Google to download software. And when they say down, use Google, one of the things they're talking about is if you, if you search Google for particular kinds of software, like uh, the example they use in this one is uh, download, they searched Visual Studio download, Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, the ad, the, the, the sponsored link that they got at the top was to a malware link. So what they would have downloaded would have had, mal had malware in it. Uh, they, you know, they downloaded it as a test. And what it means is, is that, Malware people with this malware are able to buy ads from Google because so much of this is, is automated and get their malware out there under the aegis of Google's advertising. That's very bad. Uh, what do you think of this? Well, I've been saying for a long time when you do a Google search, never click on a sponsored ad, always go down till you find a real article that is you know your search result uh, you know even if it's microsoft or even if it's anything i never click on the sponsored ads mm. because i found most of them are squirrely and so when you google something you want to only go to the ones that you recognize as a legitimate site never the sponsored ads and even don't trust a lot of the other search results yeah yep 
that's exactly what I did was I clicked when I when I was scammed. Yeah, I, I, I clicked, thought of that I clicked when you on were, the you very first that. link because it was Yeah. It seemed it was, appropriate. It yes. said exactly what I wanted to see. Right. Yep. That's what so. they're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, Google is both my best friend and my worst enemy, depending upon how people use it. Right. It yep. really is. So uh, yeah, just uh there's a lot of this is a lot of this out there. And you know, and this isn't even just people trying to like get uh uh Cracked software. software. Yeah. Like they're like they're trying to, you know, illegitimately download commercial software. So it's not even that. This is stuff that's le- you know legitimately free that they're searching for, but they're clicking on these things uh the wrong link and getting so you gotta be ve- you gotta be very careful clicking on links to, to anything that you're downloading to your computer. Just just well, in and, and 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 further than that, just it's not just software, it's anything you search on Google. You have to be careful because it could be taking you to a malware driven site. It's not right. you're trying to download anything. It's just taking you there and now installing it. That's true. That's true. That's the other one. So then our uh, third headline is this is essentially I want to get your opinion on whether you think this is good or bad, whether you want to you, you're going to do this, which is that AMC theaters, one of the large theater chains, movie theater chains, they're going to be, well, emulating airlines or concerts, well, that's the other the other one they use, selling tiered seats, tiered in this, not in the way that they're physically uh, located in the theater, but pricing tiers. So the best seats, which by which they define, I think the ones in the middle of the theater mm-hmm. will be most expensive. Then the ones around them are going to be less expensive. And then there's going to be a handful of the cheapest seats, uh, like the ones right up front. <laughs> which uh, are going to be, you know, even less expensive. And they talk about how those ones will only be available to members of their rewards program, which I'm like, how much of a reward is it to get the worst seat in the house? (laughs) Okay. Uh, So they claim that, oh, no, this is just going to prioritize people's ability to get the seat they want in a theater. And, you know, we're going to make sure that they're not all the seats. There'll always be seats that are, what the price is today, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think of this? Is this just a scam to get more money out of of, uh, theater goers? Well, it would be nice not to have to, or shall I say, when I was looking for seats, not to get the first couple of rows, I probably would pay an extra dollar (laughs) not to get the first couple of rows. Right. But, um, I mean, it's not like a, a, a concert hall where you might have curtains or you might have a, 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 a little, um, you know, those protruded, protruding seated areas that might block your vision of something. Uh, I, I just can't, I, I wouldn't, Yeah, I wouldn't take advantage of it. I'm, I'm not impressed and I don't even, I can't quite even articulate why. Because when I, when I look at a concert, I, I do understand the, the pricing tiers. But there's something more real at a concert that I'm paying for versus a movie, which I, I don't know, which is, Fair and not fair, all all at the same time to say. So I like I I I dislike the whole idea. But there's also what what if you what if you pay for the the lower price and you go to a movie that's been out for four weeks, and then you just go sit in the middle of the empty theater. <laughs> exactly. Right. Uh, you know I uh, I don't know. It just I think it's a way for them to try to get more money, and and I just I'm sort of glad I don't go to AMC's to begin with. I've never found them the best out of my options, even in a big bigger city yeah i just i think it's only going to continue to drive people away from theaters i think you know rather than offering it doesn't give you anything like we're it there's no benefit to us this 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 isn't going to improve the experience for the vast majority of of moviegoers it's going to degrade it it just Mm -hmm. it just benefits them although in the long run i think it's just going to drive more people away and they're gonna they're gonna suffer even more so uh it's I, agree. I think it's going to reverse in about six months after they try to pilot it. Yeah, I think all the other theater companies are going to look and see how it goes for them, and that will determine whether they follow suit or not. And for a theater to be to be perfectly honest, there's not the left or the right side of the theater. You're still there's not that much of a difference that I would pay more to sit in the middle versus on the right or on the left. Right. I would pay more to go to a theater that has the nice reclinable seats. And my own arm pat, arm my arm, my own armrest. Yeah, and, than, and and nice meals delivered to your chair. Even even better, yes. <laughs> yes, that's even better. Yeah, Father Father Chip and I, when we do coffee and cinema, the theater we would go to, uh, 
the, it often had the, you know, the, the seat side ser- uh, food service. And yeah, that, that, that was worth paying for. <laughs> Let me tell you, that was very yeah. nice. Uh, they, they need to find ways to make the experience better, not just simply more expensive. And that's, I think the big difference. Um, there is a benefit, by the way, I should go back to the concert thing to be up front in the concert, to be closer to the performers. Yeah. There's actually oh, a yeah. benefit to that. You know, there's not a benefit to sitting in the front row at a movie theater where you crane your neck and <laughs> can't see unless you're a kid and then you feel like it's something special. <laughs> right, well, and, right. and at, a, at a concert hall or, a, you know, going to a theatrical performance, it, those those places are so big that if you are in the back, you can barely see Yeah. versus a movie theater. The screen is so big. If you're in the very back, you've still got to, you can see everything. It's a, right. it's a decent spot back there. Even the biggest theaters today, you know, movie theaters today, you're not that far away from the screen. Right. 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 All right. So those are our headlines this week. And uh, let's move on to our picks of the week. Father Andrew, what's your pick this week? So my pick this week for uh, those of you who of course know me, know that I'm a, I'm a gamer And in particular, I'm a big fan of the Nintendo Switch. And just uh, last month, they uh, they they announced a few new things coming to the Nintendo Switch and they launched it that day. And I'm forgetting what day it was, but they have a Nintendo Switch online service, which gives you access to uh, original Nintendo games, original uh, Super Nintendo games. And they added Game Boy games. To that, mm. to that uh, online service, which is which is great for those of us who grew up in that era and love the original Game Boy games. So there's only a handful on it right now, but more are of course coming. And I don't, I never understand why they want to like stagger releases. Like just you have all the codes to all these games, just throw them all on there, and we'll <laughs> we'll have fun. Uh, but in particular, um, my pick is the the online service plus the expansion pack, which makes it more expensive. So the online service is twenty dollars a year. The expansion pack makes it fifty dollars a year, but in addition to Nintendo, the original Nintendo, Super Nintendo games, Game Boy games, you also then have access to Nintendo sixty four games, and they just added Game Boy Advance games. So, a whole slew of of retro games for those of us who are um, like me, love love the the nostalgia of those games. Those are those are on there, and and there's of course more coming, and um, I think there's some other perks too of of having the expansion pack. So. Yeah. And Sega that Genesis is, too, which is wild. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. I I think it's uh, for for Nintendo fans. It's it's the console to have, especially for all those older games. Um, I think I mean for the most part, there there's most of them are coming to the Nintendo Switch platform. There's a few that have yet to make an appearance, or you need an older console to play. But for the most part, most of all of the games that we grew up with are are slowly making their way to the to the Switch. Nice. They also have a family discount too. So if you if you have oh, perfect, uh, yeah, you know, uh, several people in the family who are fans have switches or whatever, that's cool. Good, excellent. Pat, what's your pick this week? Well, I have had over the years a lot of clients who who moan and and worry about the amount of duplicate photos that are in their libraries, whether they're in Windows or whether they're on a Mac or whether they're in you know on their phone. They're trying to figure out a way to get rid of all those duplicates. And up until recently, Apple had not released anything that they endorsed. Uh, because it is difficult to try to automate determining which is your best photo out of a bunch. Uh, And Apple finally released something that is uh, available on the Mac and on iOS, on the phones, where they put things in a duplicate album if they determine them to be almost exactly the same and then they show you on the face of the picture how many kilobytes or megabytes that particular image instance is so like i was looking at one today that had four different pictures three of them had the same size and one of them was substantially smaller maybe it was a thumbnail or something and at that point you can click on the individual pictures and delete the ones you don't want. And it leaves, you know, the highest level one there, or you can choose their merge. And they say that it does an AI type thing where it looks to see which is the highest quality resolution and keeps that one. It's, it kind of merges. I don't, I think merge is a bad word, but you know, it picks the best one Mm. to keep in your library. And so 
in the past, we've looked for other ways to try to get rid of duplicates. And I'm saying, no, I'm not going to, I don't recommend using those older methods to do it. Go ahead and use apples because I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I saw going through my library. Now, you can't just say merge them all. Uh, you, you still have to look at each individual set of pictures and make a determination whether you want them to do the best one. And, and maybe on some wedding photos or something, you might want to individually say which one you want to keep. But I think on the average, here's a picture of a flower that I've got four copies of. I can let it merge and be happy with the result. Yeah. And the way you find it is if it, it's like in the iOS, if you open the Photos app and you go under Albums, Scroll all the way down, and there should be a duplicates album there. Now, you might not see it right away. Uh, it might need to have time to put the duplicates in there to, 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 to create the duplicates album if you've just updated. Um, I think I've already done this because I don't have a duplicates album in mind. Anymore? And yeah, and I've been on iOS 16 for ages. So um, I think I did already did this. Uh, however, that's what I did on my phone first was I, you know, I found the duplicates album, et cetera. Today, when I was trying to show somebody, there was no duplicates album. And I'm saying, I know they haven't reduced their, their, their duplicates. And I kept scrolling and there's a bottom section called utilities. Yeah. And that's where the duplicates was in. It was not in the albums. Yeah. It's not there in mine either. So I think I, I've already taken care of it, but yeah, just and, keep but, scrolling. But, but, yeah, just keep all the way to the bottom. Because on the first time I saw it, it was under albums. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> under the utilities. Yep. But, but the first time I saw it, it was truly just another album in the albums folder called Duplicates. Okay. Um, yeah, I might uh, I might have to d yeah, dig around in that again. Uh, but yes, that's worth doing. And because it's in the system, you know, I always, I, I agree with you. I always, always leery of those third-party software Cause I didn't want to lose my photos, you know, I mean, right. your photos right. are everything. And I'd rather live with duplicates than lose anything, but because it's built in by Apple, I feel better about it. That's for sure. I feel like they, they've got the, they know the guts of the system and, and they're better at this. So Yeah. And it, and it, I mean, yeah, it, it has your photos, your duplicates right side by side. And it tells you right. like which one, like it's, it shows the file sizes of both of them. And if you merge them, I think what it does, I, I think I read somewhere that it'll, it'll take the larger file, the higher, higher right. resolution the and higher, keep that the one. The higher, the better file. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it works really well. Good. Good. I'll have to, have to play around with that again. I remember playing around with it when it first came out. Um, I don't take a look at it again. Excellent pick. Uh, now, my pick is more of the Akara sensors. Now, I, I had picked the Akara leak sensors for HomeKit. Uh, a while ago uh, because of my traumatic house flooding situation. I didn't want to have that happen again. And so I've been looking at more of the Akara sensors and there's a, they have a door and window sensor that I've picked up. And this is basically a home security system on the cheap. Now it's not going to be as good as a monitored home security system, you know, with a professional monitoring center that will alert you and that whole thing. This is sort of a bare bones sort of thing. But if you're willing to put up with it and willing to fiddle a bit in HomeKit and in your, uh, in your apps, uh, you can set up a pretty decent system. So uh, there are sensors for your door. So they're designed for, you know, a swinging door and there's sensors for windows. So for sliding and they're, they're magnetic. So they have Two pieces, one that's stationary and one that goes on the sash as it goes up and down. And then you get a hub that, that they connect to, and you can set up various uh, uh, alerts. So the way I've got mine set up is, is I can tell HomeKit to, you know, hey, S-Lady, uh, set lockdown scene, and it will do ver various things. It will lock the door, arm the system, uh, arm my uh, ring cameras to in away mode, and all that sort of stuff all happens. And then when I come home, I can do it from my car in the driveway and lockdown scene and it will unlock the door un d disarm the system, put everything back in the, the state of I'm at home. Um, so it gives me some peace of mind. It's, they're not that expensive. Uh, see the, the door and window sensors. Let me see the, there were $17 for the, for one sensor. So, and then you can get packs of them where uh, it's even cheaper, you know, per, um, so if you get, you know, get a whole bunch for you know, your windows and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, the, the Cara system is pretty good. It works pretty well. I'm, I'm having a little couple of issues with my, uh, mesh Wi-Fi interacting with my home kit stuff, but I don't think it has anything to do with the Akara sensors. Um, that's a whole nother issue, which maybe I'll bring up on another tale of woe 
you know, Dom's Tales of Woe. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is going to become a regular thing on the show. <laughs> so, all right. So those are our picks this week. And that'll do it for this time. We would love to hear what you thought of any part of our discussion. You can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the StarQuest Facebook page at facebook.com slash StarQuest Media, or send an email to technology at sqpn.com, or visit the StarQuest Discord community at sqpn.com slash discord. You'll find links from our discussion and picks of the week on our show notes on starquest.fm slash tec203, tech203. Follow Secrets of Tech in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, in your favorite podcast app or at our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash StarQuest Media. We should also hit the bell to get notifications. We'd like to thank James for his research assistance in this episode. And until next time, Father Andrew Kinstetter, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of technology. Absolutely. Pascot, thank you as well. Adios. And once again, I'm Don Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the secrets of technology on StarQuest. <laughs>